welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the 105 FH18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG that most people know as a Leffy or a Leaf Blower. This one is known as Fifi La Piu Piu and it's actually located on the Eastbourne of Malinovka under the command of Provo Bob. Well, the big giveaway that it's Provo Bob's particular VP is that it's got a kangaroo on the side of the gun shield yes this is actually listed as a French SPG but in actual fact the uh, VPs were actually German SPGs <laughs> yeah they were captured char B1s which were converted into artillery pieces they only converted 16 of them but uh, yes it is a German gun on a German captured tank or boot panzer Okay, he's decided he's actually going to try and shoot towards some of the enemy tanks over the far side of the battlefield. In fact, he's aiming for that bush over on the far side because he thinks there's an enemy tank in there. More than likely there is, actually. Rounds out. Well, first shot doesn't hit anything, but there are plenty of enemy tanks around. He's landed in a Tier 5 game with Tier 4 tanks in it. So a lot of these tanks don't have the armour to stand up to his 105mm howitzer. He's capable of doing 410 alpha. He will penetrate through 53mm of armour. And he's got a... Oh, he's got the ability to do that. Wiped out the Stug for 193 hit points. And that was a Stug G as well that went down there. The standard reload for this RT is 8.92 seconds. And we see Provo Bob's got it down to 7.85. He's now looking for another target. He's found one right up on top of the hill. So looks, tier four German light tank. And he's got the five centimeter gun, which is kind of unusual really, but he fires a round in, just misses him. A little further away, we've got a Panzer Fier Ausrung H. He finds a quick snapshot. Doesn't work. Snap does not work. Dial in on target and you get accurate hits. So line it up. He's dialed in now. Just needs to get it on target. Rounds out. This looks good. Yes, it is. 416 hit points. That's a penetrating shot for sure. Okay, can he do the same to the looks? If he does, it will ruin that looks' his day. The Lux is coming up to that bush. No, he stops on the corner though, but he is now one shot. So if he can get a shell in, rounds out. Oh, he does get a hit and he gets taken out the next shot. So it's a damage assist on that one because he tracked the Lux. Okay. He's moving up a bit because there's a leopard nearby. That's the VK-1602 leopard not the uh, tier 10 version of course and he's changed his mind he's actually going to head further south well you can shoot over most of the battlefield in a in a fifi you don't have to uh, move too far to actually be able to shoot over the entire range you just have to approach the center of the map to to get that ability kv1 he's lined up but he's just trying to make up his mind which side the kv1's going yeah, just hold the aim still and let the tank decide where it wants to go and then you fire in and you'll no normally hit it. Because if he's moving backwards and forwards and you're moving the aim backwards and forwards, you're never going to meet. But if you uh, hold the aim steady on a specific point and then let the enemy tank walk towards that point, then you get hits. Now you see, he missed that one because he tried to hold the aim on the target instead of holding it on a fixed point on the ground. Again, he's missed it, you see. Aim at a specific point. He fires that one, and he was trying to track the target, and he missed it. He's, try he's trying too hard here. You're trying too hard, and that's why you keep missing. Aim for a specific point on the ground, and let the enemy target move into it. Rounds out. That's better. That hit the turret. 
and the target's gone down. The, it was actually taken out by RKB1. He's fine snap at that tight 95 who's pulling back. And there's the Panzer Fier Alsorung H. Now lining it up on the spot ahead of its track. Change to spot. And he let that one walk into the target. And he did take the hit. He's now one shot. Now do the same again. No, that one's going to miss, but it's a good try. Okay. That, aim ahead of it. That's it. Aim ahead. That's it. Got it. That's it. He got it that time. It just takes a bit of practice. Now, that Type 95 wasn't going very far. In fact, there's a lot of bots in this game, and I think that was one of them. That Leopard this is going all over the place. The aim at the moment is really close now. That was the one I was worried about earlier, and he is actually shooting in our direction. But Bob puts a round into him snapshot on a, uh, a shotgun, and this time around, it does work because he's close enough to actually smell the guy. Yeah, bad case of Old Spice or uh, BO, I should think. But anyway, he's moving. There's only three enemy tanks left. They've got an M4A1, an SU-85I, which is the captured version of the Stug that the Soviets managed to put into their use. And the enemy's got one VP of their own as well. Now, we know where the M4A1 is. See, is. He's actually in the lake. There's the SU-85I trying to run away. Now, he aimed that one long way ahead of the target. He is right at the other end of the map. Okay, when the target stops like that, then dial specifically in on that spot. And there's the enemy Fifi. Go for him. So it dials in, rounds out. Close, but no cigar. Should say close, but no moniker. Rounds out. This should hit. It does. And he gets a nice 111 hit points. Come on, you can do it again. Rounds out. Oh, the guy moved. Unfortunately, we lost another teammate, the Leopard, on our team. But he's firing ahead of the path now, and it is tending to work. Just got to find that SU-85I, and we've got to kill that M4A1. I'd save your ammo now because you're running short. You've got 20 rounds, 21 rounds left. Now you can take out this M4A1 for sure. Just an accurately aimed shot. Oh, you've got a bit of a rescue bloom there. Okay, hold your aim. Don't shoot until you're absolutely certain. Now, rounds out. Yes, right up his rear. He got an unexpected enema there. And that means there's only one enemy left. It's the SU-85I. He's over in this corner, or at least that's where he was last seen. He might make a runner. Our guys are all moving in that general direction. And so should uh, Provo Bob. He's doing that at the moment. He's trying to uh, move whilst he's aiming. That's not always recommended because you can actually accidentally ride up over an object and actually flip yourself over. But the enemy SU-85I just got taken out by the KV-1 and that's game over. Here's the end of battle stats and that was the third class tanker for Provo Bob in the 105 left HATB2. He managed to get a fighter badge for taking out four enemy vehicles in that game. That last shot in the M4A1 was very, very good indeed. He held the aim steady and it went right up the guy's rear. And well, he probably never felt it really. It was one smack in the back and that was it. He was all out of it. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got six in that one. And his win rate was very high, 4,410, which is surprising considering this was a tier five game with tier four tanks in it because you don't expect to get a high win eight unless you're doing a lot of damage. And he did manage to get a lot of damage in the end, but uh, it took him a little while to get his aim in. I think I really need to uh, explain to Bob and to others exactly how you do it precisely to get the best results. It's not about following the target, it's about working out where the target's going to go and then putting the shell into that target as he moves through the point that you're aiming at and that way you can get maximum damage on them. So anyway, let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the tank that he killed. He got the M4A1. He got a high caliber 
for 1,709 hit points. The second highest damage was the enemy Fifi with 1,589. And with just two hit, po two hit points in it, would you believe that Fredo Bob got the highest damage on his team, but he's just two hit points below the damage of Crispy888, the other Fifi driver on the enemy team. So it was very close. So third place for Bob on damage. When it came to kills, though, Bob got the high spot with the KV-1. They both got four kills apiece. Three kills went to the enemy Fifi, and then two kills went to the M4A1 and Panzerfeuerstrung H on the enemy team, and also to the Stugfeuer and the M8A1 and the Leopard on his own team. When it came to base XP, though, it was the Leopard on his own team who did the best with 814. I think that's because of all the spotting he was doing. Yes, he did a 1,442 hit points of spotting, that guy. And a win 8 was very high, 4,245, which means he was not only spotting, he was actually doing damage as well. Uh, the second highest base XP went to the KV-1 with 755. And the third highest went to Provo Bob with 746. Provo Bob fired 31 rounds in the game, got 10 direct hits on the enemy and three penetrations. Let's have a quick look to see which ones he penned, but I'm pretty sure he penetrated that M4A1 with that shot. Yes, it went right up his rear. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was a pretty good shot, that was, right up. And he, he just needed to let the aim settle to make it work. He also penetrated the Stug 3 Ausserung G. That was the, uh, uh, the good shot, the long-range shot that he actually managed to get towards the start of the game. And I think he penetrated this Panzer Fear. Yes, he did. Look at that. 593. That was the one where he was trying to get his aim settled. He aimed at a spot ahead of the path of the Panzer Fear and then fired it. And the Panzer Fear just drove straight through the spot and took the round right up his rear. And he was out the game. So it does work. It really does work. I promise you. OK. Um, he fired 10 direct hits, 3 penetrations, and 11 splash. 1,587 hit points of damage, of which 1,526 were at more than 300 meters. He received two hits from the enemy. Those were from the Leopard, the, v, um, the VK-1602, who got really close and was actually using the 30 millimeter cannon. Uh, he did get two penetrations, unfortunately. Uh, seven enemy vehicles were damaged, four were killed, 91 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 38,192 credits on a premium count, and after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 33,841 credits profit, 1,119 XP, 2,238 for mission completion, and 448 for this being a premium vehicle, one of only two premium RTs in the game. Wargaming are missing out on a huge amount of money they can make if they were selling more premium RTs. Everyone would buy them. Everyone. I mean, everyone's bought the Fifi. So I can't see why they're not selling more premium RTs, except that, of course, those players who just can't play with RTUC. So that, that's why they keep moaning and groaning about, oh, more premium RT in the game, which is silly because Wargaming could make a fortune if only they did sell premium RTs. And we could, we could tell them which one to sell. And I'm sure everyone would love them. 3,805 experience points altogether. Well, I say everyone would love them. Everyone except those people who hate Arty. Those people wouldn't love them at all, but the people who play Arty would adore them. Anyway, that's the end of the game. A good game for Provo Bob. Only a third class, but 4,410 win eight. You have to put that one down as a win. And notice how his technique was improving towards the end of the game. I'm going to be showing some more Provo Bob games in the Fifi over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll be able to show you exactly how he's improving in each stage, because they're over a, a general period of time, over a few months between each. These were replays which I've actually managed to cobble together from the ones he sent me, and hopefully you'll get a, a good impression of how you can play the Fifi to your advantage and make good kills. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.